You may have never stopped to wonder how the fuel tanks that power motorcycles, or even cars, were actually made. Yet the process behind them is far more fascinating than you might imagine, and it's well worth spending just a few minutes to witness how it all comes to life. Galvanized anti-rust steel sheets are cut by a machine that performs the metal shearing. The process begins with longitudinal and transverse cutting of the sheets. A large stack of sheets, consisting of multiple layers of cut galvanized steel, is shaped into its initial form by a hydraulic press machine. This marks the first stage in shaping these sheets, and throughout the manufacturing process, they are repeatedly formed by various types of hydraulic presses until the final shape is achieved. The formed sheets are once again placed in another press, using a different mold that shapes them into motorcycle fuel tanks, and subjected to pressure. This is the main mold and primary layer that forms the motorcycle fuel tank. This process is carried out solely through the extremely high physical pressure of the hydraulic press, without the use of heat, impact, or hammering. The extra pieces of the mold, once formed, are cut manually with an electric sheet metal shear. Performing this task requires skill and precision. Observe the hands of the master craftsman. The next stage is where our piece undergoes drilling. These holes are intended as the locations for screws to secure the tank. Additionally, the next hole, larger and positioned in the center of the tank, is created to serve as the fuel cap opening. At this stage, you can observe the double-sided spot welding machine, which welds the inner part of the fuel tank cap from the inside, so that the cap can be properly attached on top. The use of double-sided spot welding machines is widespread in both the automotive and motorcycle industries in various applications. Now that the first layer and the outer part of the tank are completed, it is time to create the inner part, or in other words, the tank chassis. The extra edges around the tank chassis, after being formed, are once again trimmed by a skilled craftsman using a metal shear, preparing it for attachment to the first part, the outer layer of the tank. After trimming the excess parts, the tank chassis is sent to the hole drilling section, where holes are made for screw attachments and other tank components. Here, you can see the fuel outlet of the tank, which is welded on the inner and bottom parts using a double-sided spot welding machine. The locations for screws and other parts are also marked with a template, so that the remaining sections can be joined using double-sided spot welding. Hey. 
Now it is time for the tank chassis to be connected to the outer layer of the tank. For the final process, connecting these two parts together, double-sided spot welding is required. The two parts are mounted on each other and joined using a welding fixture. After welding these two parts together, for structural strength in the sealing process, all welded areas are re-welded to ensure no gaps remain. This task is entirely performed by the machine. Finally, the excess parts are trimmed so that the tank becomes uniform and reaches its original size. The use of machines such as metal shears, vertical hydraulic cutting machines, or double-sided spot welding machines ensures higher speed and greater precision in the work. In the final stage, the area for the fuel pipe is welded. The only test performed after manufacturing these tanks is the leak test, which is conducted by applying high air pressure inside the tank underwater to ensure that the product has no leaks. Finally, they are prepared and sent for painting and coating, depending on the factory's production process. If you enjoy watching this type of content, you can help our channel grow and gain visibility by liking and sharing it with your friends.